Hi guys, it's your girl Steph, and today we'll be talking about this piece, which is a walking chi pal, which I created from Marvelous Designer and then textured it and lighted it in Cinema 4D. Now we are going to do a walkthrough, which is basically, uh, I've created a series so that I can talk you guys through the process, how I got from A to B. It's not so much telling you every single detail like the nooks and crannies, but if you guys do want to know every single list of detail, please come by on my Twitch. I show the process on there every single Thursday, UK time, 7pm. So that is where you need to be if you want to know every single detail and if you guys want to ask me any questions, specifically in real time, in person. But this video is here to show you a general breakdown of how I made my latest piece. So when I started this piece, I had a general idea of where it was heading. I had to search up on Pinterest actually a chi pao pattern because I literally had no idea how to make one. So the best way is just to try it and to see if it works. Chi pao with a lot of help from my Twitch friends and um, we finally got there. It was a lot of just like tweaking and the, the cuts, the cuts by the chest area was new. Like I did not know how to do that, but we managed to figure it out. So that was all fine in the end. This is the most satisfying part. I love it when I sew something on and then I press simulate in Marvelous Designer. Honestly, I have the best time in Marvelous Designer because it's just so easy and quick to make garments. And once it was all built, I decided to bake the animation so that I can then move it into Cinema 4D. But before we export it, I have to adjust the UVs. So you got, okay, the thing about UVs that I've learned from using Marvelous Designer is that you have to put each garment in a separate square to increase the resolution. I've even got a tutorial on this on my channel. So if you guys are interested in moving your UVs into Photoshop, then check it out. So first of all, we gotta export that OBJ and you gotta make sure that the unified UV coordinates is ticked so that what you just organized in your UV map is nicely exported. Also, another thing to note is that when you color your garments in Marvelous Designer, try not to color them white because some reason when they export the UVs in the OBJs, the background's white. So if you if you texture your your garment white, you're not going to see it. So now we're going to export the Lembic and that is the one that is holding all your animation data. It is the one you just baked. So with this one, when I export, all the settings are all the same and I just press OK. Once everything is exported, then we bring the OBJ and the Alembic into Cinema 4D. You bring, you import your OBJ and your Alembic and you bake your Alembic so you've got all those keyframes there as you can see. And then once you've baked your Alembic, all the keyframes are set, you drag, you, oh, you copy and paste the OBJ's uh, set selections and the UVs and it should replace it and attach it to the Alembic. So now your animated garment has all the UVs and that UV you can texture in Photoshop. So now I'm going to open up one of the UVs. So the set selection opens up to this piece here and we can test out which part or which section it's linked to by just putting a random shape. I just put a pink rectangle so that I can see it and um, I'm going to import that back into Cinema 4D. So I'm going to save it as a PNG or a PSD and then import that back into the same texture. So I'm going to do the same with the sleeve here so that I know that these textures are going to show on the garment. It's just good. It's just good to check that your UVs are actually connected to your piece. And now we're going back to Cinema 4D and importing that Photoshop file we just edited. So you need to go to that location where you save that edited file, whether it's PNG or PSD. I tend to use PNG. Um, I, it seems to work best for me. And then once you drop it in and replace it, you should be able to see it on your garment. You see those, I'm going to call them seams, they're probably not seams. I'm just going to make them a normal redshift or normal Cinema 4D texture so that I don't need to texture them in my UV map. Then I decided to jazz it up. I illustrated some patterns 
on my iPad actually and then I dropped them into Illustrator on my computer where I have more control. So with these illustrations I'm going to copy them from Illustrator and then drop them into Photoshop where I am able to you know arrange them however I like. So I save this as the PNG and then I check it in Cinema 4D again and as you can see it has applied. Now this is just using the diffuse channel but you can see that the pattern has updated and I can start customizing the pattern to however I like. Back into Photoshop and now it's time to turn it into an opacity map. Now an opacity map is a black and white map and imagine it as a mask or an alpha mask. So anything white will be seen and anything black will not be seen. So I'm going to use it so that I can manipulate it in Redshift and lay it on different colors and make it look a lot more interesting than it does right now. So in order to use the opacity map, you have to use a material blender. Uh, well, I find that the easiest way to use an opacity map. So here you see it's turned gold. I can make the background different colors. And then I ended up using well, green, emerald green as the base color, which I think it looks it's such a nice color man i love it <laughs> and then i started adding more textures so here i'm adding even a base pattern base pattern on top of no below the pattern so it just makes things look a bit more interesting then i decided that the flowers need a different color so i ended up just masking out all the flower petals and then i got rid of all of the stems all of the leaves and then i used that as another opacity mask so there's a lot of opacity mask in this you can see that right there and it just helps to bring the piece to life and i had so much fun just experimenting with different colors different gradients like there's just so many combinations you can make in this redshift material network i ended up choosing pink flowers which is surprising because i don't usually choose pink but it happened and then uh, once i was happy with the texture I started modeling the scene that it will sit into. Now I was imagining this kind of grand palace that this character is walking through. So just built this kind of archway, this grand archway and just started playing around with, I guess the scale of things. And is this part's really fun in my opinion. I actually changed my mind a lot when it comes to texturing and colors, but I ended up with this pinky red which um i guess i would say i was inspired by the film in the mood for love with the warm rich hues i really like that kind of vibe and then it was time for lighting so with lighting i like using one hdri just like a general dome light and then i like putting a few area lights around my subject so with my garment i really like oh well in my work in general i like putting rim lighting or edge lighting it just really helps to give it that kind of pop and your eyes are drawn to well that where that light is hitting so in this piece i did a green edge light and a pink edge light and it looks fire and then we have a little go with the redshift post effects which i like playing around with i mean i still comp it i still comp it in after effects afterwards anyways but just adding a bit of bloom, a bit of flare, and what's the other one? A bit of streak really makes a difference. It just really gives it a different type of atmosphere. So yes, comping is super important. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that gave you a really quick short insight into how I work through my process. As always, you guys are welcome to follow me on Twitch where I actually show the full breakdown all the nitty-gritty details you guys can even ask me live so come through on twitch i stream every thursday and also for anyone who is interested in 3d motion design or 3d in general i've got a discord for you guys to join it's called 3d wizards anyone is welcome it, like it's for all levels it's all to help support 3d artists who are beginners who are advanced everyone's there to support each other and to basically just help each other learn 3d is a really nice community and i hope you guys would join the link is in my bio lastly i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys really did please give it a thumbs up or give me a comment so that i know you guys like this type of video sometimes i just upload my streams and i i i don't know if you guys prefer watching my full streams on youtube or if you prefer watching this type of breakdown so it'd be really good to know 
for me so I know what type of videos to make in the future. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.